All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with you today. Today we are reading in the book of Micah and uh, the book of Psalms. And so uh, Micah, again, is a, he's a prophet. He's a minor prophet, again, because the length of the book is a short one. But Micah is a prophet who, who, uh, who lived um, in about the 8th century before Christ. And he uh, prophesies that uh, um, against, he speaks to the southern kingdom of Judah, but he speaks and he sees that uh, both the capitals of Jerusalem in the southern kingdom of Judah and the capital of Samaria in the northern kingdom will be destroyed by warring nations because of their, um, because of their sinfulness. And uh, so he sees and he gives warning ahead of time that, uh, that the Assyrians will be uh, will conquer um, the northern kingdom, and then that Babylon will uh, will conquer the southern kingdom, which both of those happened. Um, first of all, the uh, the northern kingdom was was conquered, and Samaria was destroyed in about 722 uh, BC before Christ, and then uh, the southern kingdom, Judah, was uh, uh, was defeated by Babylon, and uh, Jerusalem was. Um, you know, destroyed uh, about 587 uh, BC. And so, and, uh, but, so there are kind of three parts to the book of My Micah where uh, he gives these prophecies against, and then he, he gives a prophecy about how uh, destruction will come and judgment for their sin, but then God will bring a restoration and a remnant back out of the people. And so he gives kind of the downside and he gives the upside. And uh, so you'll see that as we kind of work our way through the book of Micah. And so let's go ahead and read uh, chapters one through three. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth during the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah, the vision he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear you peoples, all of you, listen earth and all who live in it, that the sovereign Lord may bear witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Look, the Lord is coming from his dwelling place. He comes down and treads on the heights of the earth. The mountains melt beneath him and the valleys split apart like wax before the fire, like water rushing down a slope. All this is because of Jacob's transgression, because of the sins of the people of Israel. What is Jacob's transgression? Is it not Samaria? What is Judah's high place? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap of rubble, a place for planting vineyards. I will pour her stones, stones into the valley and lay bare her foundations. All her idols will be broken to pieces. All her temple gifts will be burned with fire. I will destroy all her images. Since she gathered her gifts from the wages of prostitutes, as the wages of prostitutes, they will again be used. Because of this, I will weep and wail. I will go about barefoot and naked. I will howl like a jackal and moan like an owl. For Samaria's plague is incurable. It has spread to Judah. It has reached the very gate of my people, even to Jerusalem itself. Tell it not in Gath, weep not at all. In both Beth Ophrah, roll in the dust, pass by naked and in shame, you who live in Shephir. Those who live in Zanon will not come out. Beth Ezel is in mourning. It no longer protects you. Those who live in Moroth writhe in pain, waiting for relief. Because disaster has come from the Lord, even to the gate of Jerusalem. You who live in Lankish, harness fast horses to the chariot. You are what the sin of daughter Zion began. For the transgressions of Israel were found in you. Therefore, you will give parting gifts to Mor Moresheth Gath. To the town of Azib, Azib will prove deceptive to the kings of Israel. I will bring a conqueror against you who live in Marishah. The nobles of Isla Israel will flee to Adullam. Shave your head in mourning for the children in whom you delight. Make yourself as bald as the vulture, for they will go from you into exile. Chapter 2. Woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. At morning's light they carry it out because it is in the, their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them. They defraud people of their homes. They rob them of their inheritance. Therefore, the Lord says, I am planning disaster against this people from which you cannot save yourselves. You will no longer walk proudly, for it will be a time of calamity. In that day, people will ridicule you. They will taunt you with this mournful song. We are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. 
He takes it from me. He assigns our fields to traders. Therefore, you will have no one in the assembly of the Lord to divide the land by lot. Do not prophesy, their prophets say. Do not prophesy about these things. Disgrace will not overtake us. You descendants of Jacob, should it be said, does the Lord become impatient? Does he do such things? Do not my words do good to the one who wait, whose ways are upright? Lately, my people have risen up like an enemy. You strip off the rich robe from those who pass by without a care. Like men returning from battle, you drive the women of my people from their pleasant homes. You take away my blessing from their children forever. Get up, go away. For this is not your resting place, because it is defiled. It is ruined beyond all remedy. If a liar and deceiver comes and says, I will prophesy for you plenty of wine and beer, that would be just the prophet for this people. <clears throat> I will surely gather all of you, Jacob. I will surely bring together the remnant of Israel. I will bring them together like a sheep in a pen, like a flock in a pasture. The place will throng with people. The one who breaks open the way will go up before them. They will break through the gate and go out. Their king will pass through before them, the Lord at their head. Chapter 3. Then I said, Listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel. Should you not embrace justice, you who hate good and love evil, who tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin and break their bones in pieces, who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot? Then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time, he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. This is what the Lord says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Therefore, night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination. The sun will set for the prophets and the day will go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced. They will all cover their faces because there is no answer from God. But as for me, I, will, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare the Jacob, to Jacob his transgression, to Israel his sin. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell fortunes for money. Yet they look for the Lord's support and say, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a, hubble of re a, a heap of rubble, the temple hill a mound overgrown with thickets. It's interesting here, isn't it, that uh, you know the, um, the condemnation that is given is against the prophets who um, basically are just, they're, they're, you know, they're proclaiming, you know, will the Lord actually do something that harms us? Um, you know, they distort what's right. They despise justice and, you know, and they say, you know, is the Lord not among us and no disaster is going to come upon us instead of, instead of acknowledging their sin, they, they live presumptuous. I think that's the thing that we've got to be really careful of. How many people live in a presumptuous way? They presume that God is not going to bring judgment on them because of their sin. And they get live with a faulty sense of, um, of God and who God is. They lose sight of his holiness. And when we lose sight of his holiness, we lose sight of truth. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to read Psalm 150 now. Uh, Psalm 150 <clears throat> says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with timbrel and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with the clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals, let everything that, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Psalm 150. Well, I want to congratulate you. Uh, you just finished up uh, the, the longest and the largest book in the entire Bible, the book of Psalms. You've read all 150 Psalms. That is something to, uh, to be commended and congratulated. You've read through the prayer book of the church. That is what the Psalms are, the prayer book, 150 chapters you read through. So congratulations on that. 
And uh, we'll be back tomorrow to, uh, to finish up the book of Micah. And we'll also be reading um, in Isaiah. Okay, so we're going to go back and we're going to pick up in Isaiah chapter 40. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much, God, for uh, Lord this day. Thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to read your word. And Lord, to, uh, to just be reminded, God, um, of who you are, to praise you. Lord, we think of what the psalmist says, praise the Lord. And uh, Lord, all let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And Father, we praise you today. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you, Lord, for uh, your guidance in our life. And Lord, we desire to submit every part of you. And, uh, and Lord, to, you know, to walk in your ways. And, and God, help us to, uh, to, to be willing to adjust our lives, to change our hearts, Lord. And uh, God, for the call that you placed on us to, uh, to, hear, uh, to hear the truth, Lord. Not just things that what we want to hear, what our itching ears want to hear, <clears throat> but Lord, to hear uh, the truth from your word. God, to call us to a place of holiness, to walk with you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us to uh, to not, um, you know, to not just bring around us, you know, people who will just say the things that we want to hear, like the Israelites did. But Lord, that we would hear your word, that we would be called to um, to a life of holiness, to a life of triumph. And uh, God, we thank you that you have given us the victory through Jesus as we um, submit ourselves to you. So Lord, may your blessing be on each one who's read with me today. God, uh, thank you, Lord, that they've spent so much time in reading through the book of Psalms. And Lord, I pray that the Psalms would just uh, remind us, God, of your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, amen. Uh, great to see you again today and uh, tomorrow. Uh, we will be right back here uh, together uh, reading through the rest of, uh, of Micah or actually reading a couple chapters. And, uh, and then we'll have another day or two where we uh, we'll work our way through the rest of the book of Micah. All right. Have yourself a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.